Welcome back to Sledded 24-7. I'm your host, Misha Johnson, and right now, it's time to catch up with one of the fastest racers on the Amsoil Championship Snowcross Series. I'm, of course, talking about a racer who's got quite a story to tell. Take a look. A veteran of the snowcross battles, number 44, TJ Guler, has been racing a Polaris for 15 years. TJ Gula, Henches Racing, I race on a Polaris. I've known TJ since he was, you know, on little dirt bikes. We were looking for something to do in the winter time to keep me busy, and my dad bought, uh, bought a couple of snowmobiles. We went racing, and I live two separate lives, I tell people. It's like in the winter time, I move out to Wisconsin, and they don't see or hear from me in, until March when I'm done, and then the same thing goes in the summertime. Back in 2009, it seemed like just another day at the track. But this heat at the Duluth National turned out to be a life changer for TJ. Two years ago in Duluth, TJ Gula suffered an accident and an injury that could have been career ending. A serious accident on the backside of the track left TJ down with a broken neck. I think I slept on the couch for four and a half months and uh, it was, it was definitely a long, long journey for my wife and I. <laughs> Made 100% recovery. Uh, I got clearance from my doctors to go racing again, and I feel great. You know, I, I feel like it never happened, and every once in a while I'll think about it, it's like, yeah, well, you know, it was an accident. I mean, it was, it was a pure accident. It was nothing that anybody did or that I did. It was just, uh, it was an accident. I can't say enough about all my sponsors and everything. They stood behind me when I was hurt and uh, laid up for the year with, uh, with my neck and my shoulder and stuff, so. He opted to work hard and come back. TJ's out there showing, I'm still here, boys. Last year, first year back after the accident, didn't go the way TJ wanted it to go. He struggled. He didn't have any podiums. He wasn't getting it together. He wasn't making it work the way he knows he can do. What he's capable of wasn't showing. Not the case this year. He's showing, even at his age, he's in his 30s, he's still got what it takes. I don't ever give up. I mean, I don't care if I'm in 10th. I'm going to try to get 8th. Or if I'm in 3rd, I'm going to try to get 1st. I, I never just settle and uh, I just keep trying. I just keep trying to better myself as a racer and I don't ever give up. Now TJ's recovered and he's back on his sled of choice, Polaris for Team Henches. All the hard racing leads to research and the latest technology for Polaris consumer sleds. Yeah, the new Polarises have uh, exactly the same suspension uh, geometry on the front ends as our race sleds and that's, that was derived from the racetrack and transferred over to the trail sleds. So uh, that's one, one place where Polaris gets a lot of uh, R&D done ahead of time. Uh, the front suspension, we've got some different geometry we're trying on, some, on a couple of our sleds. Um, the steering system, we're trying, always trying to reduce steering effort and uh, increase the turning radius of the sled. After 15 years of racing, with a great team like Henchers and Polaris, this could be the year for TJ Gula on the Amsoil Championship Snowcross Series. We got second, and you know that's uh, that's an accomplishment. Now it's kind of like winning almost because there's so many fast guys. You know, I mean, I'm only 30 years old, but I've been doing this for 15 years on a professional level. So my goal this year is to, uh, you know, basically finish out the year healthy and, and hopefully be uh, top three in points. I love this sport because I mean it's definitely something I grew up doing. You know, riding snowmobiles. You know, it's provided me with a, a great life, and uh, I definitely owe the sport a big thank you. <laughs> Jeff, what's something that maybe we don't know about TJ? Well, he's been around quite a while. He's kind of a wily vet. TJ gets out front, pretty tough to catch. So would you say that he's been around as long as Paul Mack? Well, nobody's been around quite that long, but I do have to say, TJ on a Polaris, pretty tough to beat. You know what, I would agree with that. But all right, Slaughter, stay right where you are. Jeff and I will be right back. Still ahead, find out the fascination with vintage skidoos a brand loaded with loyalty. But first, time for a Newman's Tech Tip. Trailering, trailer height. One thing to worry about when you're setting up your receiver on what's how high to go on your trailer tongue. What I like to do quickly, walk up. Simple, is just, just kind of hold it on your knee. You, you see where you're at here? 
walk to the back of the trailer. From the front to the back, you can see you got about a two inch difference. In my mind, that's perfect. You want the front of the trailer to be a little higher than the back. It'll tow nicer. When you get that nose down, you get a lot of a funky tongue weight and you'll cause a lot of uh, wobbling. So you want a little higher in the front, a little lower in the back. And that's my Newman's Tech Tip.